Hello and welcome to another 100% human video, my friends. Bloodborne on the menu. This is guide number four on this channel. There are more to follow, of course, but this is Bloodborne. There's Dark Souls 1 and Dark Souls 2 left. After those two, yeah, we're done with the any percents, like the leveled any percents, and then we're going to jump into more specific stuff. But for now, it's going to be Bloodborne, and uh, we're going to start right away because there's much to talk about. This run is not as long as a Dark Souls run, and also not as long as the Elden Ring run. It's next to Sekiro, the short shortest one i'm gonna make myself a little smaller again like so and then we are yeah hopefully getting a hitless run that would be nice if i get hit i will continue but i will try to explain everything as good as i can if you like these guides make sure to hit the subscription button here on youtube or maybe the follow button on my twitch channel where i'm live every day you know so you jump into bloodborne you choose your character name and then you pick the military veteran because this is the class we want to use for certain reasons. First and foremost, it has like uh, a good skill strength ratio. Because um, uh, we want the the skill first and foremost. Um, in Bloodborne, we'll use a lot of visceral attacks and those scale with skill. Our weapon will also scale with skill. But uh, the visceral attacks is very useful to have a lot of skill because I don't know why they did that, but they made it scale it. They made it like, uh, so it scales with a stat, which is not the case in other games, I believe. But in Bloodborne, that is the case. So what you want to get most is skill. You wake up in your Sefka's clinic. And then after there is like a little tutorial-ish thing where you are supposed to die. There's a werewolf down there and uh, you have to do a back step. If you miss that back step, you can Hunter's Mark out. You just run away from the from the werewolf. If you Hunter's Mark, I will show it real quick. At the very beginning, lose your 320 echoes. We'll just neglect that for now, um, but you can escape the dog like that, you know? Usually you'll have those 320 extra echoes, but it's not that big of a deal. So you can just Hunter's Mark if you were to miss the back step. I want you guys to know this because um, uh, it's just annoying, like, uh, to, you know, get hit on that dog and have to restart. Obviously, if you do a single game run, then it's not that big of a deal. But you just run behind the dog, you charge R2 on his back, and you take the visceral, you kill it, you pick up whatever he drops. You can now unequip the Hunter's Mark again if you want, because it's not necessary to have it any longer. Just so you're aware of that it's possible. If you, for example, do a marathon run like, you know, whatever marathon run, this is like a very good strategy to know about. So you walk up to this carriage and now you slow walk because there's this guy patrolling. And while he patrols, I will uh, tell you what to do. He comes back to us and then he turns around and walks away. And what we're gonna do, we'll sneak up on him, behind him, and we're gonna do another charged R2 attack on his back. So the moment he turns, we're gonna slow walk behind him like so. And when you're like here, you just charged R2 attack and you take the visceral and you kill him immediately. He drops an item you can pick it up there are more um, blood vials here and then you just run in you pick the molotov cocktail you run out and when you're followed immediately by this guy you got to be careful bait them away a little bit because they have like nasty quick attacks this is a little bit of a situation here but you just have to bait them around and hope that, you know, they're not quick enough. They will follow you, obvi obviously, on the ladder. But uh, usually you are quick enough to immediately, like, um, uh, take the ladder. That was a very, un you know, uh, unfavorable RNG. The moment you pick the ladder, you're invincible. They can't hit you any longer, even if they were to try or if they were quicker. Here you can choose your weapon. And what we want to choose is the saw cleaver, as you can see. This is one of the better weapons. It scales E with uh, skill and D with strength. We want the saw cleaver uh, not only because of the scaling, we want the saw cleaver because of its transformative attack. There is also a pistol you gotta choose. We're gonna choose the hunter's pistol because it's only for the parries. Um, you equip both of these things and the saw cleaver or the transformative attack is this R1 L1, okay? You can continue, obviously, if you just R1, L1, um, and L1 again. 
like R1, L1, L1, L1. This is how you continue the transformative attack. These attacks are mostly used not only for damage, they also build up beast blood meter. Um, there's an item which is called uh, beast blood pellet. We're going to use that throughout the run a lot. Um, it's kind of like a red tear stone ring on crack. Is this a five o'clock free crack giveaway? You just build up that beast blood meter. If it's completely full, you have 75% more damage. You also take more damage, but since this is a no hit run, obviously, you know, that's neglectable. You teleport to central Yarnum, and this is now a, like a running section. There are a lot of enemies, but luckily you're able to outrun most of them pretty well. So you go to central Yarnum, and then you just, instead of going to the right here, you drop to the left, you lock onto the enemy, dash L1 to kill it. And then you pick up the Molotov cocktails here and you run all the way here up the ladder to this item and you pick it up. This is your first upgrade material, Bloodstone Shards. Uh, you need those to upgrade your weapon. You regenerate stamina here, you run past the plaza. You will be shot, but they miss you. And then you just run past this guy with the gun. You can turn the camera here because he might shoot you again, so you can strafe the shot a little bit. And you just hide behind the corner until these guys de aggro. Sometimes a dude follows you. I also should have mentioned we pick up Molotov cocktails and we also pick up like uh, oil urns later on as well um, for the first boss fight. You know? The Molotov cocktails obviously are, as the name says, Molotov cocktails. This is throwable, it does damage. I'm pretty sure Tom is gonna edit in like the the items again. Uh, you you R2 transform and R R2 these two crows and then you start shooting the last one. Be careful, they're fast and they can fly pretty far. You shoot it three times and then it's dead. You pick up the first two oil urns for yourself. When you throw these oil urns onto an enemy and you throw a Molotov cocktail after, they take significantly more damage. And then you pick up the item to um, uh, the uh, right of this guy and you run away. He will not hit you. It's another four mollies. So now you drop down here. You run past all of these dogs. Just ignore them. Just sprint past the dogs. And then you roll to the right here through these yeah, um, uh, crates. Hit those crates and you talk to Eileen. Eileen will give you items as well. Four, Bold Hunter's Marks, okay? These Bold Hunter's Marks are like homeward bones, basically. And you can use them to, yeah, bail out of a fight. You drop down here, there is an enemy to the right that will oftentimes shoot you, so just sprint past it. You sprint around this corner, and then you R2 this guy. Before these R2s, you always um, uh, elongate your saw cleaver with an L1. So you hit both crows, okay? You pick up the oil urns, and then you climb. You drop down, and then you climb all the way up here, this ladder. There is another item we want to pick up to make the first fight, like, more consistent and easier, you know? There's multiple ways to fight Father Gascoin, which is the first boss fight, but uh, the way we do it is really consistent. You just charge R2, charge R2 this guy, it's pretty simple. Pick up whatever it drops. And then you climb further up. And there is a window. And you talk to like a girl there. She's within the window. You are maidenless. Find a uh, girl's mother. And now you get the tiny music box. And that's like super helpful for the first boss fight. Now you can equip three items. The music box. You can equip the oils and the molotovs. And then you go all the way back down. You just slide all the way back down here. And this item you see down here, this is one of the, what we're going to pick up, but you have to be fast because these guys will wake up, you know? So you pick the silver bullets and then you run all the way to the left because there's a guy to the right here as well. And you sprint down this um, uh, staircase. You align these guys with your bullets a little bit and then you throw Molotov cocktails at them. One, two. Be careful, these crows can sometimes follow you. When you hear them behind you, you gotta be careful. The reason we kill them, because these guys have very quick attacks. 
and when you sprint past them, they can easily reset your run. You run to the right, pick up another Bloodstone Shard, and then you just, like, run away. These crows will drop as well, but that's not an issue. You regain stamina here, and then you run to the left flank of this pig. Whatever attack it does, you lock on, charge, and then visceral attack into the pig's ass, and then you do another charge attack, and the pig is dead. You pick up the Saw Hunter's Badge, like a bell bearing on Elden Ring, you know? You can buy more items in the shrine if you have these badges. Um, the Dew is like, uh, you pop it and you get uh, Blood Echoes, which is the uh, equal of souls, you know, or runes. So you go up the, uh, the ladder here. There are enemies to your right, they will ignore you. You just like run past all of the enemies now into the boss fight, okay? Make sure you have like the music box, the Molotov cocktails, and the oil urns equipped, okay? So you run into the first boss fight, this is where it starts. And now I'm gonna talk a little bit about Father Gascoin. He has like nasty attacks, like with his shotgun. After three uses of the music box, he will transform into his beast form. And that's what we want, because in his beast form, he takes more fire damage. And uh, we're going to do that first by setting him up um, at this like tree. When he jumps at you, you just use the music box. And then he will stagger, you know, as you can see here. And after, like, he staggered, you just run past him. And we will set up a cheese now. It's called the Staircase Cheese. Um, you will let him walk up here. When he does, like, a rolling or running attack or whatever, you use the music box again. You run around. And you go exactly to this point. Now we will come to you a little further down. You gotta be careful, of course, um, uh, with his attacks. But you will figure it out slowly, you know? It's it's not super easy, but it's like a little bit of a positioning thing. But you'll figure it out slowly. Now he transforms into his beast form. And as soon as he starts attacking, you throw like the first oil urn. And then he starts attacking again, and you throw a Molotov cocktail. He attacks, another oil urn. You wait for another attack, you go a little bit behind him, or a little bit back, and another Molotov. Another oil urn, you wait for an attack, another Molotov. Another oil urn, another Molotov. And now another Molotov, now you don't have any oil urns anymore. Another one. Sometimes you'll run out of Molotov cocktails, as you can see now. And you're, the boss is not dead, but then you just uh, make, like, elongate your saw cleaver with an L1, and you start hitting him like that, okay? Be careful, he can hit you if you, like, attack at the wrong, like, time. Um, uh, just hit him, like, a bunch of times, and then he's going to be dead. Pretty straightforward, simple as well. And it's not uh, uh, that hard. The positioning itself is a little bit of something you have to work on. But uh, it's going to be learned pretty quickly. Um, you pick up this um, red jeweled brooch here on the, on the roof. And you use it. Because there is like a gem inside. Uh, these gems can be used to infuse your weapons basically. Like you can put them onto your weapons to make them stronger. And we're going to use this one to make our saw cleaver stronger. After you got this, you open the door with the key you just got. And the way is free to the uh, cathedral ward. Which is like, yeah, basically a crossroad where you can just go like multiple places. You open this chest. Because what you want is uh, the workshop tool that gives you the opportunity to put in gems and upgrade weapons and all of that stuff, you know? Um, uh, cutscene, you pick up this lantern here and then you can immediately move on. You run to the left, there's an enemy here and you just uh, run past it and you pick up this uh, set here. The reason we pick up the set is uh, that we need it for our beast blood buildup. Like with this set, our beast blood buildup is much better. So you put it on the whole hunter set. And it also looks cool, you know. So it serves multiple purposes. And then you wait for this patrol to 
um, uh, patrol away from you. And then you run all the way into the corner and pick up like these Molotov cocktails here. That's a, Those are four Molotov cocktails and you hide behind this tree. Because the patrol is going to come back to you now. You know? And while you do so, you can already use this like... Do and get like some extra blood echoes. After they patrolled like away from you again, you start uh, walking. And then you start sprinting all the way at, on the outer side. Like, just keep on sprinting on the outer side of this, like, uh, area here. And, uh, you should be fine. Like, the, the patrol should not see you any longer as soon as you're here. Then you walk up these stairs a little bit and you turn around. Because there are two more dogs coming down now. And you wait for them to come here. And then you throw a Molotov cocktail, kill both dogs. And, uh, sometimes one dog gets stuck up there, but you just, like, throw one, and then you throw another one if you have to, to kill the second dog. You can easily strafe these shots, and then you can just, like, hit him three times, and the guy is dead. You pick up the bullets, if he drops bullets, and you go to our first NPC friend, and he will give you a very good, uh, item. The fire paper. Take this. Here you go, you got your fire paper, and then you just run away. Fire paper is like, you know, like an, uh, uh, a, a weapon buff. It fires up your weapon and it gets stronger, fire damage. Uh, you pick the lever, and then this gravestone opens up. Pick the madman's knowledge, and you run down here. You see this four in the top right screen? When you use a madman's knowledge, you get more insight, and insight is also a currency. You can use it on Bloodborne to buy items, for example. There is a dog you just run away from. Sometimes the dog is like very quick and follows you, but um, in 95% of the cases, he will not follow you. Then you can just use the lantern. If he were to follow you, what you want to do is you want to go behind here, bait out like jumping attacks, and then charge R2 attack him through the wall and kill him slowly. You need like three or four charge R2 attacks to kill him. And what you also want to pick up before you teleport back is these pungent blood cocktails. These pungent blood cocktails right here are super useful. They uh, um, are like skulls on Dark Souls. You can throw it to uh, distract beasts. It doesn't work for all the enemies, but it works for beasts. You know, they will be distracted and they will go for the pungent instead of for you. You get four of your cocktails. When you get like a, a limit, when you reach a limit of an item, it gets like put into the storage box. And we had like four um, Molotov cocktails put into the storage box earlier. So you can pick them up right now. And then you can upgrade your weapon already once. And you can also uh, put this like uh, blood red gem into it if you want to do that. And what you can also do is you can buy more of these pungents with your inside you have. After you've done all of that stuff, you can equip the pungents. And then we can go and run through Old Yarnum. Old Yarnum, also kind of a nasty running section, but it is, uh, it's pretty consistent, I would say. Um, sometimes uh, there are some yeah, problems happening, but usually it's, it's fine. The problem with Old Yarnum is there's one guy at a Gatling gun shooting at you, but if you just keep going the way I do, it's going to be fine. So there is like one... Um, uh, wandering Madness, I believe they are called. It's like a, uh, a dung beetle on Elden Ring. You know, that's the equivalent. And these have, like, uh, the shards. Um, upgrade materials, usually. And you can just kill this guy with a Molotov cocktail. And pick it up. Three more Bloodstone shards. And you kill this guy with a Molotov cocktail as well. And then you swap to the pungents. And you throw a pungent to the left here to attract these beasts and then you throw another pungent to the left here to attract these beasts down there and then you sprint here you drop down here you roll to the left and you roll again and this guy will shoot you but he is always too slow and there is also one guy to the left you just sprint like this they will never hit you and you're good already. As soon as you're here, you're good. And then you just go into um, uh, this part of the area. You drop twice. 
you pick up the echoes here, the cold blood do, and you throw another pungent to the right to attract all these beasts. And then you jump down here and you run away. This will go, like all of these beasts will go for the pungent now. And then you have like, you know, you're home free. You made it out here. You're all the way down old Yarnum now. And now you keep sprinting. There are more beasts, so you have to be fast here. You run all the way down, you throw a pungent against this, like, pillar. It will attract the werewolf. You pick up more pungents here. Those are two more. And then you have another werewolf here. Throw another pungent to the right. And then you just run away from this werewolf. And you run to the left. And as you can see, there is another werewolf hanging at the wall up there. So you run in. You pick up the beast blood pellets. These are the first six beast blood pellets we have. And uh, sometimes this werewolf comes back, but you can just throw another pungent and be safe. You know, there's another one jumping out. There are a lot of werewolves here, but you can just keep going. Run past this guy because he's only screaming. And then you run away from the werewolf that is following you right now. You will not care about this one. We can come back later to kill this one. Like, you can just, like, pick up this upgrade material later. As you can see, the werewolf followed, and he's right behind us. So, what you want now is Beast Blood Pellets equipped. You can also heal up if you want. This is the second boss of the run. It's called the Blood Starved Beast BSB. This strat is pretty straightforward. You always want to strafe to the right. And when it does certain attacks, you double charged R2 it. You know, you can also visceral attack it, but... I'm used to double charge R2 it because I do it level 1. Maybe a visceral attack would do more damage on a on a leveled run. We'll have to figure that out, but I think double charged R2 should be alright. So, you go into the fight and you eat your beast blood pellet. And then you trigger the BSB. And you just, as I said, strafe to the right. This attack can be punished. Charged R2. Charged R2. Then it resets somewhere and you do the same again this attack can be punished charged r2 charged r2 this is a, a little bit of a phase transition now it has more moves for example this jumping attack here you just like keep on straving this is also a new attack it's like a flurry you just keep straving to the right this is like where it charges away from you keep like doing what you're doing until you get like one of the attacks you can punish right for example this one charged r2 charged r2 this one as well charged r2 charged r2 and now it's gonna do like a, a double explosion basically where it yeah, it's basically like a, a phase transition again. It move, the moveset uh, is widened again. And you cannot be close, because where, where it was exploding now, there is like a poison cloud. And the moment you get poisoned by this cloud, it's also a hit, right? So you've got to stay away from it. So that's why I moved all the way to the other side of the room. And we do what we did before, which is to keep on, like, uh, running away and waiting for the right attack. Charge R2, charge R2. And we keep on doing what we're doing until the BSB is dead. Okay, now there's another explosion. Just run away. As soon as it does the second explosion, the first poison cloud disappears. You can just go on the other side of the room again. And, you know, you keep doing what you're doing just on the other side of the room. Um, it's pretty, like, straightforward and simple. <laughs> and... There it goes. ESP done. 07. Uh, this serves two purposes. Technically three. Like, technically, BSB is not a boss that has to be killed in this run. But first and foremost, you get Echoes. It's a pretty simple boss. You come down here anyways for the items. And the most important purpose is it opens up uh, the Upper Cathedral Ward now. Um, and we can go Upper Cathedral Ward. And, um, yeah, make our way to Amelia, you know, which is pretty useful. Now that the beast is dead, we can go back and pick up the additional upgrade material here. 
So you just like kill this guy with a couple of R1 attacks, like so. Pick up these three and then you can just run back and teleport to the dream and upgrade your weapon to a plus two and then we can immediately go to amelia there's no other setup needed we'll just keep the echoes for now and we're going to level up after amelia is dead and uh, then we're going to be much stronger after amelia because we can also after amelia buy more upgrade material by the way this is the upgrade lady i didn't even talk about her it's the doll <laughs> And uh, she will like upgrade or she will like uh, get your stats, you know, if you talk to her. But more to that later. Now you go to Cathedral Ward because this door now opened after BSB is dead. Go to the right. There is like a lift and you lift all the way up and then you run in. You run past this boy and you just hit him twice and you're good. And then you just keep sprinting here. They shoot at you. Keep sprinting past this guy. And then you regain stamina here. Because there's another wandering madness, madness we want to kill. R1, 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 L1. The wandering madness is dead. And then you just drop down here. And now there's a little bit of a, yeah, a parkour section, I would say, almost. Um, but it's pretty simple. You just, like, walk into this, like, you know, uh, into this, uh, yeah, uh, 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 um, like, space between these planks. And then you drop, and you drop again, after healing yourself, of course. You open this door, and then you are in the workshop in the, uh real world i'm not quite sure about the platform lore but this is like the same place but it's not the dream you know and you can open this up and you can get the doll the doll set is like a cool looking set of course we're not going to use it but you can sell it you can sell it for i don't even know how much um blood echoes in total but i i'm pretty sure it's like twenty-five thousand or something so it's a lot you know you sell it for a lot of blood echoes and that's why we pick it up and then you can immediately go further down, further down, you roll like this, and you go all the way down here. And then uh, there's one werewolf here. You just ignore him, open the door, and you just run away immediately, or roll out and run away. And here you regain stamina, and you just run past these crows, and you run past this dog. It will attack you, but it never hits you. It, at least it never hit me. That's how I do it all the time, even on the marathon stuff. And then you pick up this thick cold blood here. After you did so, you just sprint past this dude with the scythe. And you sprint past this giant and you strafe to the right because it will attack. And then you just sprint all the way up past these two dudes. And you immediately open the door when you can. They will attack you, but you got the iframes now. And then you just spam the roll, you know? Spam the roll, roll into the cathedral. And now we're gonna go through Amelia, which introduces, for the first time, the limb staggers. Bloodborne has a mechanic, it's called limb staggering. If you hit like a limb of a boss a certain amount of times, it will stagger. And then you can just move to the next limb and stagger this. Amelia has four limbs, of course. And you can stagger both arms and you can stagger both uh, legs and that uh, basically gives us enough time and damage to one cycle the entire boss fight you buff with fire paper and beast blood pellet and then i'm gonna go through the process hopefully it's gonna work because if it doesn't work it's going to be bad so you buff with beast blood you buff with fire paper you go into the fight there will be a cutscene that is playing you go in you wait for the opener real quick, turn around, and then you do R1, L1, L1, R1, L1, L1, another limb stagger, go around, wait for stamina, R1, L1, 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 transform back, lock on, and take the visceral attack. Then you go to the R1, L1, L1, to the lag, turn around, R1, L1, L1, let her poke back, and another arm is left, R1, L1, L1, 
and Amelia is dead. That's as easy as it is. It, it always works. It's like super consistent. You don't even have to do anything else but that. It takes a little bit of practice because you need like the, st the stamina management. And um, uh, you need to learn how to, you know, what stagger first and how, like, it's also precise in how you hit her, of course. But it's, like, very consistent and it always works if you practice it a little bit. So as soon as you got this, uh, you touch the skull and you now have the ability to buy more items here. And uh, now we can set up, like, a lot before we move on towards the shadows. So you can now buy bloodstone shards, you can just use all your memories to buy bloodstone shards if you want, it doesn't really matter. And you can just like, upgrade the weapon once more. And now we need twin bloodstone shards, we'll get further into the run. So we're going to sell the entire doll set, that's 7k, 14k, 21, uh, 28, uh, 35 actually. You can also sell the starting gear if you want to do that. And now you have 63,000 and you buy some throwing knives. Let's buy just like 15 throwing knives or whatever. And you can also, if you want, buy some more Molotov cocktails. You don't need to buy any pungents at the moment. Uh, that's not necessary. And now you can level up. Okay, so we just like level up more skill. Like, let's go 25 skill and 20 strength. You do not need to level any endurance at all in this run. It's not necessary. So you can just go like this. 20 and 26. That should be all right. Uh, granted, I didn't do the leveled run of Bloodborne in a while. So I don't have like a perfect setup sheet where I look up the stats. But, you know, I think that should be good. Then you go back to the Grand Cathedral where you just killed Amelia. And from there, we're going to go to the Shaded Woods now. What you mostly need at the beginning of the Shaded Woods is uh, Molotov cocktails. You just equip those immediately so you don't forget about it later on. And then you just run all the way to the shaded woods from up here i figured this is like the easiest way to run into the shaded woods it's not necessarily the fastest or it probably is the fastest but it's definitely the easiest way you just run back past these boys the giant will now not trigger it will not attack at all because it's too slow and then you run past this guy as well he will attack you but he's also too slow and you just keep sprinting and uh here you don't sprint any longer you just slow walk and pull the lever there are dogs to your right if you sprint the dogs will hear you and then they will attack you um this is like madman's knowledge if you want to pick that up for later on to buy some pungents for example you can do that but it's not necessary you can also pick up the tempering blood gem stone it's another stone that you can put in your weapon later when you're uh, when we're done with the snack forest and then we will be able to uh, upgrade our weapon even further or infuse our weapon even further. There's another madman's knowledge if you talk to that guy, you know. As I mentioned earlier, you can use it later on to buy pungents, which can be useful so you don't have to spend any like blood echoes for the pungents. And then you just drop here and you drop here. You pick up these like... Uh, first twin bloodstone shard and then you wait for this patrol to walk by and you just sprint all the way to the lantern down there you know also very consistent running section here the the wood part so you pick the lantern you see this guy on the bridge and you just run to his right and there's another guy with a gun um, sometimes it shoots and then you just strafe the shot sometimes it doesn't shoot you run past this trap and you just keep sprinting and then you go to the right here. And then there's this wolf guy. He will attack you. You can just outspace it and then run past him. Um, you can also use a pungent for the wolf guy and just throw a pungent and run past him. You log onto the wandering madness and you kill it with a molotov cocktail. You pick up another three bloodstone shards, a uh, twin bloodstone shards. And then you run past these boys. You run past this hill here. Uh, there's an enemy to the right that will also follow you a little bit, but you can just outrun it. And you can just keep going here, past all of these trees. And then there are multiple cages with dogs in those. Now you go close and you kill every single dog with an R1. Okay, you kill them in the cages, that's important. 
because otherwise they will be released and they will kill you or hit you. And um, uh, after you did that, you go to the left here and you pick up the blue elixir. Blue elixirs are like hidden body or like uh, the Gachin sugar on on uh, Sekiro, another six bullets. And down here, another six um, beast blood pellets. As soon as you're here, you're in a safe spot, so you can breathe for a moment. And then you use one blue elixir, and what follows next is called the Molotov River, okay? Uh, there are like a bunch of enemies, some up top, and they can throw Molotov cocktails. They won't see you as long as you have the blue elixir. That's why you use it right here, and then you swap to the Molotov cocktails if you didn't already do so. You run past these guys, you run behind these guys, and then you go into this Molotov River, and you kill this guy. You kill this guy with a Molotov cocktail, and then you run up this wall and you stay all the way to the right so these guys don't hit you go behind this dude slow walk and charge r2 charge r2 you got the guy you pick up the twin bloodstone shards if you drop something you can pick that up as well and now you pick up these items another twin another twin and you open the door and you pick up this item which is three more pungents, okay? Then you sprint all the way and you sprint to the right into this like hole. You pick up these vials, you roll through the crates, you roll through the crates, you wait for this guy to shoot you, you strafe it, and then you just run past all of these dudes. This guy at the cannon, just run past him as well. And then you are into this like windmill thingy or whatever that is. You know, um, uh, wait for this guy to walk down the stairs and then you just swap to the pungents because now you have to distract one beast dude. So you wait for this guy to walk down then you go to the left and you drop down here and then there is one of the beast guys. You just throw a pungent all the way into the corner and you climb up the ladder. You will now go for the pungent for a while. As you can see, he follows us now. He's like climbing the ladder. And we, what we just do is we just run away now. Like all the way over here. You pick up this item, which is poison knives. We're going to need them later for Mikolash. And also we're going to pick up these poison knives. And you go all the way into this corner and wait. Like he will not come out now. He will just reset and walk back. But you just wait here for a little while to make sure that the guy resets. And while you wait, you can swap to the Molotov cocktails and you can also get the throwing knives in just for safety reason because we have to kill one enemy from afar now. Should have been reset by now. So you go back in. Obviously be careful here, not that he's like within this corridor or whatever. And then after that, you go to the left, you drop down here. And you drop down here. Make sure that he's not around anymore. And then you just go down and you go to the left. And there is like a bridge and past this bridge there is a guy with like snacks on his hand you know snakes and you throw molotov cocktails at him because you want to kill him with the mollies uh for like three mollies and then like one throwing knife and that should do the trick now if you drop something pick it up because it can be another gem that could be used for further upgrades that's obviously you know, um, uh, luck based if you get it or not, but it's nice if it drops it. You go around, you pick these bloodstone shards, and now we're going to open up a shortcut, okay? After you pick the bloodstone shards, you take this like lift here, and uh, then you open up this door as well, and you just roll away because there's crows attacking you. They will not hit you if you just spam roll away, and now there's technically the possibility of killing these uh this npc here um uh, there is a risk factor if you want to kill this guy it will give you extra blood echoes you hit him three times you go on to the lift and then you drive down the lift and he will like follow you and fall to his death i had it happen to me that he fell onto me because uh, i i don't know i didn't leave the lift fast enough probably 
So there is a little bit of a risk factor. You can choose to do so. It's We're not going to do it for now because it's not necessary. You're like really strong. Uh, but you can technically choose to do so. You can already send it up because we will need uh, the the lift later on. We're going to pick up the last few upgrade materials and then we're going to go back and we're going to upgrade and then we fight the Shadows of Yarnum. So you just run all the way over here and there is one guy standing there. It's like a big boy with an axe. You just sneak up on him and you charge R2 and then visceral attack. Charge R2, visceral. Boom, there you go. Big boy dead. Um, pick up whatever he drops, another two um, uh, bloodstone shards. There's another madman's knowledge if you want it. And then you pick up these uh, shards here. Another two shards. You run past these little snacky boys here. Another shard, and then you go just into this corner and you use one of your homeward bones. They will like come at you these snacks, but they are not fast enough, you know. So you should be good. It's uh, It has never happened to me that they snuck up on me or whatever. If you just use it, you're good. As soon as you're here, you just um, use this, uh, what do you call it? You know, uh, the lantern, you go back into the dream. And now it is setup time. You just go and fortify your weapon to a plus six now. Now we have a plus six and now we need bloodstone chunks. And now we can use for our first imprint, we can use the tempering. And for the second, for the third one, we use the red blood gem from the beginning. Now you also want to have full health because as long as you're full health, you get a damage boost. What you can do is you can use the echoes you got, of course. And we can like stock up on items a little bit. For example, on Molotov cocktails, just to just a few, you know, because we uh, will need them for ROM later on. So we just get 10 mollies and we also can get like six more knives. So we're all good, stuck up on items. Uh, you can check if you can level up still. I don't know. No, we can't. So it's going to be um, 20 and 26 for now. And then you port back to the woods and now we're gonna go all the way to the shadows fight quick shout out to banjo the uncle who came up with like a pretty like brilliant shadow strategy uh which i'm not gonna get into because it's um because it takes like some setup and some knowledge and you know you need to bait one particular enemy right in front of the arena and stuff but i just wanted to like shout him out real quick because it's it's a pretty cool strategy and it makes it so you can set up a full beast blood pellet at the very beginning of the fight, which makes the fight much quicker, especially on a leveled run. So you just run all the way. This is like the main path, basically. You just run all the way down the woods on the main path. Just sprint past all enemies. Take care of your stamina, of course. And um, uh, yeah, they can really hit you. As soon as you're at this gravestone here, you just regain stamina because there are three like big snack boys here. You just want to run past them. They will attack you, but they're not quick enough. Just sprint past and after you regain stamina again. And you run further down the woodies. There's another snack to the right. Be careful. Just keep on sprinting and then leave the road here. Run past these little two ones. Drop, roll to the right, drop, heal up again, wait for this pig to go past you, and as soon as it did, you just run all the way past the pig, and now you're basically at the arena. So the Shadows fight is by far the hardest fight on the any percent no hit run on Bloodborne. It's three enemies at the beginning, it has like a very precise phase transition. And uh, you want, like, I'm gonna go through it slowly while I fight it. It's gonna be really hard for me, but I'm gonna do it, like, I'm gonna try it regardless, of course. Um, the phase transition is the most important part. The setup part is you just 
Yeah, it's an endurance fight. You bait them around the arena. You have to map out the arena in your head because you can easily get stuck on like gravestones, for example, and stuff like this. Overall, I would say this is uh, one of the most difficult fights of all any percent runs because you have to deal with three enemies, three different attack pattern, and they get more dangerous in second and even in third phase. Obviously set up a safe game here with like a USB stick or whatever if you play it on console and go through this fight like multiple times. You L1 your weapon and you eat a beast blood pellet at the beginning of the fight. You run in and they will idle toward or they will walk towards you. You just charge R2. Like best possible outcome is you hit all three of them, but if you hit two of them, it's also all right. And what you want to do now, you want to bait out these running attacks and hit them once or twice. And you want to bait out these and you want to hit the pyro guy once or twice. And you want to set up the damage at a certain point. Like, I don't know, like I will show you where you want to set it up to. It's really hard to explain where exactly on the health bar. You can kind of see it. On the health bar there is this part where it gets a little, like, light lighter like where you can see the white a little bit more and this is a where you want to set them up towards like i will set them up now and then you can see it's you can see it on the health bar basically when the other guy is away you can hit him twice even which is good and what you want to do now is just like circle around the arena and bait out these running attacks and then hit him once or twice depending on where the other two guys are and what the other two guys do. You also have to listen to the pyro dude. If you can't see him, you can hear him like shoot the pyromancy at you, right? And when you have time to hit the pyromancer, you can also do that to set up the pyromancer a little bit because you can set up two shadows and the third shadow is not going to be touched for now. The candle guy is not going to be touched for now. And then you just wait, right? Because sometimes he goes into these like flurries of, you know, where it just like keeps on shooting. And as I said, it's an endurance fight, right? So you're just gonna keep on, you're just gonna keep on moving around dodging with the pyromancy fireballs. You don't even have to roll it. Usually you can also just like walk it or sprint it. I just roll for extra safety, I guess. So you gotta be a little careful there. The most important thing at the very beginning is that you map out this arena in your head so you know where the gravestones are, where to walk and where not to walk because you can easily get stuck and when you get stuck you're basically hit. Like, there is not much you can do. So we're getting close to the perfect setup. A couple more hits. Um, the reason I put the throwing knives in is that you get an even more precise setup. You know? So you, we hit him one more time now, and then we maybe one more throwing knife, depending on where we end up. No, this is all right. Um, we don't need another throwing knife. This is actually... We could maybe do a throwing knife, but I don't want to overdo it, you know? So we just, like, do it like this. And now we're going to go for the pyromancy guy, like, once or twice. And then we should be good. <laughs> and then comes the most important part, which is the face transition. Okay, now we're good. This is the perfect setup, basically. The pyromancer doesn't have to be like... You don't have to put a, another throwing knife in the pyro guy or whatever. Uh, now comes the most important part. You need to find a window to buff yourself, and you need to separate those as good as you can. Like, the, the separation is, like, the most important part. You don't want the pyromancer to be too close. You don't want the uh, katana and the candle guy to be too close to each other, towards each other. It's like the separation part that makes it, you know, so hard sometimes. Because they don't always comply, you know. Um, uh, so what we want to do now is we want to use a beast blood pellet first. And then we're going to swap to the fire paper. And um, uh, 
The fire paper is gonna be used as well, but we're gonna use it a little later into the... Like, right before we set up the phase transition, basically. So I'm gonna use the east bud now. And then we're gonna try to... I'm gonna try to bait them so that we, uh, you know, don't get to... Running, parry, one, two, three, phase transition, kill this guy. Kill this guy. And now you just hit this guy. And he always side jumps. Like, that was really lucky of me. That was a really good phase transition. Um, uh, that was good. That was lucky. Sometimes you... It's really hard to explain it, because there's so much RNG to it, right? The separation wasn't even that good. He side jumped instead of doing like a candle attack, you know? So it was kind of lucky, I would say, almost than anything else. But as you can see, the damage is like more than enough to kill like one dude. And um, it's going to be like quite quick, you know? If you're leveled th rather than anything else, you won't have to deal with a lot of uh, second phase. Keep in mind, there's one attack. He didn't do that yet uh, on this attempt. It's like a snake attack. He like pulls like snakes out of the ground and they appear randomly in the arena that can easily get you hit. This is RNG. It is certainly RNG. It's like th there is not much you can do about it if, uh, if he does that and you, you know, you have like a unfortunate snake placement, then you most likely get hit. So after this fight is done, you have 21,000 echoes. Uh, you don't have to level now. We can do that later. Uh, you want to bait out this guy and pull him a little bit away. You can also technically um, uh, you can also technically like kill him with uh Kill him with um, uh, your weapon, but I like to do it like this because you can't enter the arena and you can just like throw some knives into him. And uh, yeah, then you're good. We can now unequip the knives for now. We don't need them any longer. And then you just pick this next lantern and we can immediately move on after you pick the lantern uh, for uh, the ROM fight, which is going to be next. You can also go back and level, but it's not necessary. So you pull these two guys and you charge R2 attack them. Be aware, they can attack back here, um, uh, which is can hit you, so be careful with the charge R2 attack. They have a long weapon, but still, you know, be careful. After you did, the, uh, did that, you just run around this house, but be quick. There is like one gigantic, I don't know what it is, but it will shoot fireballs at you, like this dude here to the right. You just sprint immediately, and now you slow walk. Or not slow walk, but you normally jog into the house. And you go briefly onto the stairs. Boom, like this. And then you go down below the stairs. And now you wait. There is an NPC, like a lady, coming down, and she will go back up. And that's what we want to wait for. She's extremely dangerous and strong. Don't move at all. Otherwise, she'll hear you, and then she's going to f*** you up. What you could do here is you could technically kill her for extra echoes and also the chest she's guarding has blue elixirs, but it's not necessary. Like, I also want this to be kind of like efficient, so um, uh, we don't do that. It's not necessary at all. You just like ignore her now because she's guarding this chest over there, you know, she doesn't give a, a rat's ass about you as well. And then you pick up the... Um, uh, Lunarium key and this opens the door. We just ran past like this door right here You open the door And then there is the dude in his wheelchair. You can just kill him for echoes and for um, uh, one uh, or two um, Inside I think it gives you some echoes, right? Yeah, 2500 you can also pick up the eye, but we don't use it and then you just jump into the river you land in Moonside Lake which uh, is an arena and we're gonna fight Rom now. You go close to Rom and you shoot Rom and then first the first phase starts 
there will be spiders dropping in and these spiders are dangerous what you want to do now is you want to circle around rom and you want to bait out attacks from these spiders and separate them a little bit but be careful with while baiting it out the separation part is sometimes they help you sometimes they hinder you um, uh, you just have to be careful you know that's all when you when you bait out an attack you can most oftentimes just kill a spider and the more spiders you killed the easier it's going to get you know and then if we're lucky we get the one cycle on rom that's not always the case it depends on the rng but uh, if we're lucky enough we'll get like a rom one cycle now you can go to the side of this one for example you can hit it with two r1s and then the first one is dead since we don't get any attacks we just do that no oh there's an attack but i can't go for this one because the other one guards it um, uh, they work well together. Sometimes when you go for one and the, uh, another one is close, then, you know, you'll be... You'll be uh, cooked by the other one in your attack animation. So be careful. I've been hit by these a million times over. And I don't intend to get hit here right now. Maybe I get hit, but I don't intend to. And, uh, yeah, you just have to have the patience, you know. There's another one ice more isolated. You can just like try to go for this one then. Nope. I don't want to do it. There's another one more isolated. Try to go for this one. Yep. Good. Another one more isolated. And the more you kill, as I mentioned, the easier it will get. Oh, that's the jump. Perfect. Another one dead. Um... The more you, like, kill, the easier it's going to get. Oh, both are aggroed. Okay. Nope. Nope. Or. Mm, both are aggroed. Nice. Side jump into forward jump. One, two. Perfect. Um, uh, the easier it gets, yeah. This one, isolated. Boom. Kill it. Another jump. It's guarded. Can't do it. Obviously, you can play this much faster, but I think this is kind of like a very reliable way to slowly kill these spiders. You know? And after the shadows, getting hit on ROM is would be, you know, stupid. Because you're on a really good run after your past shadows hitless. And then you really don't want to... Yeah, get hit on ROM or anywhere else, but you know what I mean. So, three more. One, two, perfect. Two more. That's going far, baby. What are you doing, brother? One, two. Also, I should mention that real quick before we kill the last one. Um, uh, do never get behind these. They have like an instant shot f out of their asses. <laughs> it's like a web shot or something. They also have it from the front. They didn't do it yet. But um, behind them is dangerous. You know, sideways is alright. But behind them is fucking dangerous. So be careful. So after they're all dead. What you need now is... You need the beast blood pellet again. Um, and you need to unequip your weapon. So get rid of your weapon. So you have only your fists. And your gun out, okay? Uh, now I'm gonna search for the end of the arena here, and if there is no end in sight, we can just yeah, we can just go with Rom this this way, because we don't want to push uh, Rom into a wall. That's why I'm gonna like make way a little bit for the boss itself. So we're gonna turn Rom around. It cannot attack you right now, so you're good. And um, the shell, like the front side, the rum will not take, almost not take any damage. So what you're going to do now is you use a beast blood pellet and you build up your beast blood meter with R quick R2 attacks. Sometimes rum backs away and then you just follow up, you know. You can already swap to the fire paper if you want because we're going to buff again with the last fire paper. Hit rum. Ooh. 
Light it back up. Follow. Hit Rom. Light it back up. Follow. Sometimes it doesn't back up at, at, at all. Sometimes it backs up like a million times. And as soon as it's full, you go Fire Paper and you do R1, L1. R1, R1, R1. Charged R2 for the stagger. And then you do R1, L1. Oh, it backed up again. R1, L1, dead. That last backup ROM did there, perfect. Because that's when you can like one cycle. I think we could have even one cycled it without uh, that last backup. Usually when you're too close to this lady, the cutscene starts. Uh, apparently we were like after the boss kill immediately close enough. So the cutscene starts and we will teleport it into... Um, uh, the next area, the boss fights, oh, we have 50k now, we're gonna go back to the, to the, what do you call it, and level up again. Yar Hargul, you just sprint past these guys, um, uh, pick up the frenzied cold blood, wait a little, usually do three or four circles, and then you run past this dude. And after you ran past this, this friend, you drop down here, because he will oftentimes follow you, but he will not follow you down here, and you wait. There's this patrol, and uh, this patrol over there, and they will just walk down the stairs, and you just wait for them to walk down the stairs, and then you follow up a little bit, and you walk to the left, and you pick the lantern, and you teleport back. I will pick up all the bloodstone chunks, which is necessary for our upgrades now. Uh, we'll pick that up right now, and we'll level up right now as well. Um, uh, but uh, we also want to come back here to... Um, can I fortify already? No, I don't. I have only one chunk. We also want to come back here to equip a blue elixir now. And um, the... I'm sorry, the pungents again. You can, by the way, you can buy more pungents now. With the five echoes you have. Which is gets you to ten pungents again, which is very nice. And you can now use the rest to just level up. You know, uh, you can use uh, the kin, and you can use the one we just picked up in Yarhagul, the frenzied one, and then you can just use these to level up yeah. further. I think the soft cap on Bloodborne is 25. Uh, I'm not quite sure. I'm gonna go with like 28, 28 right now. That should be, that should be good. You know, They're and then you hand. teleport back to Yarhagul unseen village and you will immediately drink your flask now it's running section time again we have to pick up some items and uh what you want to do now before the patrol goes down the stairs you want to bl blue elixir and then you run down the stairs and you strafe these guys like this all the way to the left you regain a little bit of stamina and then you run past this guy and you run past this guy as soon as you're here, you regain a little bit and you drop down and you pick up this item, which is bold paper. It's like fire paper, just, you know, lightning buff. And you jump down here and you go to this staircase and then you wait for it to disappear and you drink another blue elixir. After you did so, you go back here, go around, you pick up the bloodstone chunk and then you run this staircase to the left and you run past this lady as soon as the laser explodes okay it's precise but it's easier than it looks like and then there is like this wandering madness you kill it like so and you pick up the bloodstone chunks here now you swap to the cocktails and then you go here and you drop down onto an enemy this enemy down there you lock onto it you just drop down on it and you hit him like once or twice, so he's dead. You can pick up this frenzied cold blood again. Uh, heal up so you get the extra damage from your gem. You throw a pungent here, and then you go down, you go down, and you kill this lady. One, two, three hits. And then you just swap back to the blue elixir. You run past these guys. As soon as you kill the lady, they will be all be staggered. That's why we kill the lady. And then you just go here and you use another Alexia right here. Because there are two NPCs and they will not see you as you uh, when you do. So you just run past these NPCs. And you run out on the street. And now 
you pick up more items. It will shoot at you. It will miss you. You run here, pick up bolt paper. And while you pick up these items, this guy will turn slowly, but he will not see you, okay? So if you do it like this, you're fine. And now this guy looks down because he hurt you down there. Now you just run in and you hit him. One, two, three. He's dead. And then you just run in here, run past this guy. He will attack, but he will always miss. And you pick the shortcut and you roll midway out of the shortcut. And now you throw a pungent here at the wall. There's a dog that will come for you. And you just go here and you teleport. As soon as you teleport, you're safe. The dogs can't hit you any longer. So you walk down here and there is this like werewolf. And um, uh, this werewolf will just like walk away from you. You just wait a little bit. And while you wait, you can also get the old hunter's marks in because we need to bone out from this situation. As soon as it's like further away, just go in. You trigger this one guy to shoot you, exactly, and then you hit him three times. He's dead. You go down here, you throw a pungent into this room. This werewolf will be triggered by the pungent. You throw another pungent here to the left, and then you just run all the way up the stairs, and you use your item to teleport back. Now the running section is over. We picked all the items we need for now, so we can just teleport back to the hunter stream set up for the next boss which is the one reborn uh first you want to level up once more uh to a plus seven um that's more than enough and you get this in uh in the second slot i have plus 140 damage with these uh and that's insane actually i'm so used to level one that these numbers are insane to me after all of that is set up you get your beast blood pellets in, you get your bolt paper in, and uh, you get the pungents in once more, because you need to distract a, the dog again. You teleport back to Yarhagul, and then you drop like we did drop before, here. You wait for the patrol to walk further away, and now instead of like running down the stairs, we go these stairs, because this is where the shortcut is. You drop here, and you kill this fella with the gun one two and then there's another guy coming down you lock on you dodge his attack one two three and then you just use the same shortcut lift again and you roll out of the lift again like we did before throw a pungent the dog will be distracted and you can teleport now instead of going to the left we're gonna go straight all the way to uh, the next boss fight. Okay, um, uh, you can unequip the pungents now. You can heal up here to get the extra damage because we have to kill another lady. So you go straight, you just sprint all the way towards the lady and then you R1 her. One, two, three, she's dead. This guy will stagger now, as you can see. You drop down, you spam backstab, and then you just roll off to the carriage and you are set and ready for the one reborn fight which is in there just heal up again of course you can there's like a neat little trick where you can just sprint into the fight and when you do like a transformation attack shortly before the cutscene begins you can just keep on sprinting um within the fight otherwise like you have to gain your momentum back maybe i can do it now you just sprint in and around here you do the transformation maybe i was a little late on this one but if so, no, it works. You can just keep sprinting and uh, you just sprint past the one reborn and just go in here, okay? And now you kill these ladies up here. This is the first lady, you skip her. You kill this lady. R1, L1. I missed the first R1 here, but it's okay. You kill this lady. Now we go to the other side and we're gonna kill the ladies on the other side. And then the first one we skip will be the last one we kill. R1, L1. R1, L1. Last lady on this side. R1, L1. And now all the way back. What you have to be most careful of here is when he does these like... This. 
this is like a shot, you know? And it's really fast and dangerous, so this is the most important. As long as you're on the move, you're good. But um, uh, when you're standing somewhere, it can be dangerous. Okay. Okay, good. And now we bait him further up, okay? You just stand behind these, like, uh, pillars and you bait him further up. One more, maybe. And now you just run into the stairs. And you buff up with beast blood. You buff up with this. It will explode now. You run out. And now you hit it. R1, L1, L1 for the first stagger. And then you hit it again. R1, L1, L1 for the second stagger here. And then you go to the, to the next limb. R1, L1, L1. And then you go to the next limb. R1, L1, L1. And then you go to the next limb. R1, L1, L1. After the last stagger, you just go into the middle part, hit it twice, and you're good. Pretty, pretty straightforward. You can just, like, circle around it and limb stagger it again, and then you got yourself a one reborn done. After that's done, you can equip pungent again. Because we were going to distract one enemy. One more enemy. And then you just touch like Mikola's dead body, I guess. I'm not quite sure. And uh, you teleport into the nightmare. Which is, starts within a school. You know? And uh, you just run past these enemies. The, the school part, the blobby school part is super short. You just run past these. Um, just strafe around. They can like reach you and you go to this door and after you open this door here you're in the nightmare i believe or we already were in the nightmare i'm not quite sure like if you know write it down below in the comments because i have no idea it's so confusing nightmare of menses yeah exactly so as soon as you're here You've made it already very far. There's only two bosses between you and a successful no hit run on Bloodborne right now. Um, uh, what you want to do now is you want to distract this guy up there with the torch. So you walk up here and you throw like a pungent here. So you distract it a little bit. And you run all the way up here to this to our little fella friend. You walk with him a little. One, two, three, L1. Be careful that the other guy doesn't follow you, of course, but that's usually not the case. Um, uh, pick up the bloodstone chunks, and then we will continue. You can part back if you want to have more pungents. You need to throw three more pungents. We have four pungents, but you don't have to necessarily go back now. You can just keep on going. Um, uh, you just want to distract these enemies here. One pungent here, another pungent here. The enemy you, uh, the, the damage you take here is not considered a hit, just so you know. Um, and the third pungent here is for this last guy. And then you just keep on sprinting. There are these giants throwing rocks at you, like big stones and shit. And uh, you can just like sprint past them. They're, you know, just ignore them basically. Sprint past the guy, and then you just run all the way into this corner and pick up the bloodstone chunk. And you wait here, because the giants will reset now. And something is getting killed all the way in the distance. I'm not quite sure what that is, but something is getting killed. So you get another 1700 echoes for free, and something else is getting killed. No, it's not. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, you sneak past this giant, slow walk it, you know. For, it's, for some reason, this guy down there is aggroed, but he will not hurt you. And after you slow walk past the dude, you are good. You open the door, and there's like a room full of spiders now. Uh, all you do is you ignore them. You just go to the right, and you go further to the right here, because there is an item, uh, King Cold Blood, which is a lot of echoes, so pick that up. And then you just go here, and you jump here and now the spiders will trigger but that's all right um because uh, you can just run away and now there's an npc between you and the next room you want to uh, run towards it and then strafe to the left immediately okay like you have to strafe to the left otherwise he will hit you with that quick attack 
Um, uh, when you strafe to the left, he will never, like, hit you. He has multiple attacks, but the other one... This is the most dangerous one he just did, and the one he did does the most uh, in general. And if you strafe to the left like this, he cannot hit you. There is another uh, blue Alexiers, two of them. You use one right away. And you roll down here. And then you just go behind this and go past the chain lady. And you go past this guy. Don't sprint, otherwise they will immediately hear you. And then you just go in here. And you go on the lift. After you're on the lift, we set up the shortcut and we're good. Um, uh, there is a cage up here where there is a, a gem in the cage. You can technically get it to get even stronger. Uh, I usually don't get it, not even on my level runs, because it's a little bit iffy to roll into the cage and I killed myself once doing so. <laughs> so I, I'm not gonna do it since we're so strong anyways, you know. Um, uh, you just go back now real quick, because we can upgrade our weapon once more, I believe. Um, one more. Now we have a plus eight. Uh, we don't have any gems, but we can get pungents. Seven of them, to be exact. And we can also get some more throwing knives. Because why not? For the Mikolash kill, it's gonna be easier to have them. Oh yeah, and now we can use the Kin, of course. And we can use the Frenzy. Talk to the lady. Welcome. Very well. And... 30-30, perfect. Now look at this. What a perfect outcome. Um, uh, and now... We're going to fight Mikolaj. Annoying fight, almost. I don't like it. I think next to the shadows, the one I get hit the most on. Not necessarily from Mikolaj itself. That can happen as well, of course. But there are like a lot of puppet enemies in the in the fight, and it's oh, it's very annoying to kill them. It's it's just annoying, straight up annoying. I don't I don't like Mikolaj very much. It is a mandatory fight, so you gotta do it. Now you go to the left, you run past the bridge, and now you can see the first two puppet enemies here. And they will just stand up, but you are able to just run past them. It doesn't really matter. So Mikolaj will now run away from you, and you want to chase him into a certain position. There is good, and there is bad RNG. Obviously, um, uh, I'm gonna play it as slow as possible for you guys. Um, and we'll see what we get, right? So you run first, straight up, and there's the first puppet, you kill it. One, two, three, three hits and it's dead already. And now you go further up here, and then Mikolaj goes to the right, which is the good RNG. The puppets sometimes fall apart again, but then you just wait and you hit it again, you know. And then you just go after Mikolaj and it will run into that, like, uh, corridor, into that next room. Be careful with the puppets, of course. They have quick attacks as well. And after uh, he's in that room, you can wait for a moment. Sometimes he walks back, which is also good RNG, but you want to bait him into this corridor, okay? So you go in, you bait him, and then you just walk out. And as soon as he's entering the corridor, you can just like eat a beast blood pellet and use a bolt paper. And then we want to strafe him a little bit and see what he does when he does this. You hit him, one, two, three. You strafe it again, you hit him, one, two, three. You strafe him again, you hit him, one, two, three. And that's already it, that's phase one. That was really good RNG. Um, if that's the case, you are done with phase one. Now equip um, the Molotov cocktails real quick, because there is a Wandering Madness we want to kill for a plus nine weapon. So you go down here, you throw the mollies into this wandering madness. You go behind it, and you just hit it a bunch. As soon as it's dead, you pick up the, the chunks, and you can now unequip the... I'm sorry. He's talking again. You can now unequip the mollies again. And uh, now there are these, like, little... I don't know what... The gnome enemies, whatever. You just bait them for a running attack, and then you just run up the stairs. And you run left there immediately, because it will shoot into this, like, 
columns if you run to the left. Now we want him to technically run left. If he runs straight, we can like just follow him up and he will run into the mirror. And um, uh, now there is like two different things we can do. Either we just bait him again up and we try to kill him with the poison knives we picked up early onto the run, if you remember. Or we do something that is called the mirror strat, which I, I didn't do that in a while, so we can try that real quick. Um, first, you want to kill these puppets here. First one that. One, two, three. Second one that. And now you want to slow walk behind him because there's another puppet you need to kill. Don't trigger me, collage. Shoot this puppet. One, two, three. And now you can, if you want, you can buff up with like a, oh, he ran away. Oh, you have to shoot him. I'm sorry, I didn't do it in a while. You have to shoot him and then he goes into the mirror. Maybe he runs up again and then we can do it. Oh, uh, he runs back down. Okay. Very unusual. Very unusual, my friend. Uh, he runs further down, which is technically all right. I in here, if he runs all the way down here and he's over there, you can also kill him with the poison knives now. Like, there is technically also a kill here. Um, since this puppet over there to the right is not spawned yet, you can now lock onto him and throw three knives at him. After three knife throws, he's going to be poisoned, as you can see. And now he will lose health and he will over and over stagger again and he will slowly lose health. It's actually good that this happened so I can show you that it's also possible down here. But it's only possible if you have also throwing knives and Molotov cocktails. Okay? There is multiple ways to kill it. There is either he goes to the left immediately upstairs where he drops down and then you throw knives from up top. Um, there is this knife throwing technique and then there is the mirror strat. All three strats are viable. I can't obviously show all three strats at once. But um, uh, you know now about all of them. And you can definitely... Like on my runs, I usually do the up top poisoning. Because I'm on level 1 and I cannot do anything else basically. I can do this as well, but you know. Uh, the up top poisoning is the most efficient one for me. And uh, there's also the uh, the mirror strat, which I can't use on level 1. But you can look it up. Like, uh, on my uh, level god run on YouTube, for example, you can see me for sure doing the mirror strat. Uh, if he walks to the mirror, then you immediately do the mirror strat. I just didn't do it in a while, that's why I kind of uh, missed the shot there. I forgot that you shoot him instead of running towards him. Okay, one more poisoning. He will not be dead after the last poisoning. What you need then is you need your throwing knives. That's why I got them. You can just like throw some knives into him and then he will be dead. Like he's almost going to be dead after the poison. If you were to run this on level 1, you obviously need the knives and you need Molotov cocktails on top, but then you can kill him, you know? As soon as you're here, you're safe. There is nothing that's gonna happen any longer to you. Um, uh, there is no, like, you know, no issue, no problem that could occur. That could, for whatever reason, get you hit anymore. So, uh, just play it slow and safe, and then you have only Mergo left, you know? Oh. Oops, now I took, like, a beast blood pellet by accident. Now I took a beast blood pellet by accident. I didn't want to do that, but it is what it is. You know what they say. Um, uh, you throw some knives into him. You have 20. It's more than enough. Two more. One more. There it is. And now you wait until he goes through the dialogue. And then there is a cutscene starting. And as the cutscene starts, you are safe. You know? And then the cutscene starts. And after the cutscene starts, all the puppets are gone. Like, you, they cannot hit you any longer. And now you're good. Uh, you can get rid of the knives. And uh, you can get... What you want now is the last blue elixir for the last running section. Uh, you go to the left. You go to the left all the way up. 
It's a little bit of a confusing area, but you'll get used to it. The more you run it, the, the easier it will get for you. And then you um, uh, pick up this item over here with his chunks as well. I picked it up while chasing him already. I didn't mention that. But you pick up this item here if you didn't do while chasing him. And then you go past the bridge now, which is now here. And then you can just like run to the left all the way up here. Change to the blue elixir and you drink blue elixir up here. Because there are some shadows now. And you just run past these shadow boys here. And you run past this shadow boy, which now won't attack you because of the blue elixir. And then you are running all the way here and you pick up another bloodstone chunk or two bloodstone chunks. And then you run up here and you drop down here. Okay. And there's another wandering madness, which we want to kill. One, two, three, L1 for the stagger, and then another three bloodstone chunks. Now we're going to set up Murgo. We're going to go back once more, level up, and um, upgrade the weapon, and then we are ready to rumble. Run past these shadow boys here, and wait here, because there are another like group of shadows that will patrol. This guy follows you a little, but... It will never follow you up here for some reason. Don't ask me why. It's weird, but it just turns around and walks away. And now you want this patrol to come back. Like, they will now walk up these stairs, and that's where we want to go. And as soon as they're, like, past this tree or whatever... I don't have a perfect, like, trigger point. They will turn around at some point again. As soon as they're, like, around here now, you just start sprinting. You know? And they will follow you, but... You know, now you're good. To the right is where the last boss is, like Murgo. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna set up like the long shortcut. We're gonna go all the way down and we're gonna go back to the dream once more. You take that lift and you take that lift to the left right here. And that lift leads to the lift we already used on Mikolaj. Upgrade your weapon, talk to the, to the lady you don't need to buy any items anymore. It's not necessary. So now you have a plus nine. You can get rid of the inside if you want. I don't know if it changed anything in the fight, but I don't think so. And now you talk to the um, uh, lady one last time. This gives us two damage. This gives us one. So now you want more strength. We just go for 34 strength right now. Farewell. And we have four more beast blood pellets and five more bolt papers. Should be enough for Murgo. Murgo is a sponge. She has a lot of health. Uh, the fight takes a while. It is uh, not the hardest fight. It has some memes where she she has like a flurry attack, which you can do like in a very meme -y way almost, which can get you hit. But overall, Murgo is not a hard the hardest fight. I would say it's like one that usually is all right you know like um uh, you can definitely no hit murko very consistently there is like one attack you have to learn um, which is the nightmare face dodge it's like an invisible projectile she shoots at you it's just a timing thing it's something you have to learn and uh, as soon as you got that you will never be in the nightmare phase and the nightmare phase can be really dangerous because she multiplies herself and it's for one minute, I believe, it goes on. And it's just like a dangerous uh, thing to go through. You can survive it hitless, uh, but um, you rather want to dodge the nightmare phase if possible. So you go in, uh, like right in the middle is where it starts. So you buff with the bolt paper, you buff with the beast blood pellet, you start the fight. And then you wait for her attack. This is the triple combo, bait it out, walk back. Run in, R1, L1, walk away. Bait out the swing, run in, R1, L1, go away. Go a little further, go back in. If she doesn't do anything, go a little further, go back in. It's the swing, run in, R1, L1, go away. Another swing attack, go in, 
R1, L1. I'm missing all my R1s, but it's alright. She is not doing anything. Another swing. Go in. R1, L1. Uh, this is also a slam attack. R1, L1. This is a teleport. Now you wait where she teleports. You go back in. You buff up again. After the swing, you can buff both. And then you just bait out further attacks. For some reason, the swing is what she does the most. At least, according to my statistics. This is the nightmare phase. When she does this, you have to wait. It's really hard to explain. You have to wait, like, a certain amount of time. And then you just, like, sidewalk and you jump twice sideways, you know? And as soon as you did so, you're good. Like, you can't be hit anymore. When she does that, um, uh, that's really nice. You can just hit her with, an, with a couple of R1s. You swing, you go back in, R1, L1. That's the triple. One, bait it out. Two, bait it out. Three, go in. R1, L1. That's the triple, bait it out, bait it out, bait it out, go in, R1, L1, wait for the next attack, oh it's the swing again, you can rebuff, that's another swing attack, go in, R1, L1, that's a slam, go around, R1, L1, That's another teleport. He's flying in. Go behind her. R1, R1, R1. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Your first Bloodborne Nohitron is done. Claps to you. Claps? Oh, the claps don't work. I have to re... Oh yeah, of course they don't work. Claps to you regardless, without the sound effect. You just... No hit your first no hitron. Nightmare slain. Uh, very well done. Um, Murgo position fight. You know, um, you just like bait out an attack, you run to her side, and then you punish her from there. If there are any questions regarding any boss fight, you know, you just tell me down below or you get on stream and you ask me there, and we can just discuss it there, you know. And uh, all you have to do now is not attack German by accident. You just want to walk up to German and you just go through the dialogue. You talk to him and you press submit your life. And then you get into a cutscene and then that's the end of the game. I hope this helps and uh, I hope this is, you know, understandable. I don't know what game will be next. It's going to be a Dark Souls game, Dark Souls 1 or Dark Souls 2. And then we're done with the any percents. Which I'm looking forward to because I want to go into more specific guides, you know, how to set up a cool pyromancer or how to set up a cool, like, sorcerer or whatever. That would be nice. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, uh, and uh, I hope I will see you guys in the next guide. Make sure to subscribe here or follow my Twitch channel. And uh, I'll see you there, guys. Thank you. Tschüss. Bye-bye. Love you. Say it back. <laughs>